then the government of southern Sudan will use force to evict them from, from southern Sudan. These were the three choices that we gave them. But they went and, and picked the first one that they will, they will accept to, to talk to the government of Uganda if the government of southern Sudan can facilitate them and uh, for the government of southern Sudan to mediate between them and the government of Uganda. We accept it, and this is how we brought them face to face with the government of Uganda. It was very unpopular because they were already classified as terrorists and they were uh, indicted by the ICC, and uh, nobody can understand why we should want to talk or negotiate with the terrorists. I, wa I was being told that you better arrest them instead of talking to them. You cannot talk to them because they are wanted people on mm -hmm. the crimes against the humanity. And so you must arrest mm -hmm. them. I, I told them that you did not arrest them all this time. They started war 1986-87 and uh, none of you arrested them with all your sophisticated uh, equipment that you can see <laughs> everywhere. But none of you was able to locate them and to arrest them. If they have accepted to come to talk, why, why would you prevent us from that? So later on, when peace was seen to be coming back to the area, when we have contained them, then people started to, to, follow, to follow what we were uh, doing. Now they have signed almost all the uh, packages that were uh, intended to be, to be signed and that they are now ready to sign uh, the final peace agreement towards that month, the end of this month. And I recently went to, to Kampala to meet President Museveni and uh, for the first time I saw him, he was in, uh, in, a, in, in a very good mood, that he was happy these people have listened to us and uh, that uh, you people of southern Sudan have managed to, to tame Joseph Cohen who was not tamed by anybody. That people can now go to him and come back without making anything to them and uh, he has accepted to come to the assembly area, he assembled his forces there. And so we have now a very big group from the observers, different countries, who have been uh, uh, now joining us, military experts and diplomats and all those. So we are actually hopeful that by the end of this month we will sign a final agreement with the LRA. In northern Uganda, people are already going back, have gone back to their... Uh, original homes and they are re-establishing themselves again uh, after these uh, atrocities were, co were committed by, by the LRA. In Darfur, there is uh, a human tragedy, something which was happening in southern Sudan some years back is actually happening in Darfur. And uh, there is no solution in sight. There is no solution in sight because the government of, of Sudan under the National Congress Party, our partner, believes in a military solution. We have been telling them that uh, military solution is not inside. You cannot crush the rebels. You tried it in, uh, in, in the south, but you did not uh, defeat the SPLA militarily. You will not make it here in Darfur again. But of course, that is their focus, a military solution. The ordinary people are paying a very heavy price in that, especially women and children. And the old, you find people in the displaced camps inside uh, Darfur, and uh, people who have fled
across the borders are in shut in the refugee centers. But all the same, what are they getting? They are still getting the same treatment because the militias are all over and uh, they can just get in at any time. They are looting the the relief assistance that are being taken to the people, committing a lot of crimes against women and uh, and uh, the human humanitarian uh, agencies uh, groups. So the situation in Darfur is really bad, and uh, I don't think that it will be resolved so easily. As long as the government believes in a military victory. Time will go, and uh, the suffering of the people will always increase in, in that area. I don't know what you like about it, but if you would want to, to send a message back to people in America, we would warn them really to, to stand with the people of Darfur, and so that uh, a speedy solution is found by the government. Dissuade the government of Sudan to abandon the military strategy and look for a peaceful solution. In the same way also, warn the pressure on the, the National Congress Party for the implementation of the CPA as it came and uh, to abide by their own words, yeah, their own agreement that they have signed, they should, they should not uh, negate from it. They should, uh, they should do really what uh, we have signed. Uh, on our side, we need uh, continuous assistance, to people who have committed uh, themselves for developmental assistance as we, we still need them because uh, uh, pledges have been made, of course, and uh, the situation in Darfur diverted the attention of everybody. And so the concentration uh, is not any longer focusing on the, on the situation in southern Sudan. But... Uh, it is it is also another risk you may be risking going back to war in southern sudan if the agreement is not implemented so people need to focus really on the implementation of the cpa because if we concentrate our focus only on uh, on darfur then this thing people will slip back to war again like what is happening now in the in the borders between uh, the Messiria and the and the Dinkas in northern Bahar Ghazal. It is a terrible situation, and it is uh, a situation that if it is not handled well, it can take people back to war. There has been skirmishes uh, since uh, December, and up and up to this time, people are fighting. is being laid down but it is not as easy as that. So this is briefly what I can tell you. I will be ready for your for your questions anyway. What are the